the number one thing you need to optimize for a long, healthy life. If you wish to optimize your health with the latest in nutritional science, hit the subscribe button now. The greatest advancements into nutritional science in the last dozen or so years have revolved around the gut microbiome. Microbiome refers to the billions of microbes, bacteria, viruses, etc., that live in us, on us, and recently it was discovered in a cloud that follows us around like a microbial aura. Astonishingly, for every human cell in our body, we carry around 10 microbes, so on a cellular level, we are only 10% human. Even more amazingly, if we say that the human genome comprises roughly 20,000 genes, then depending on the diversity of bacteria that we have invited to live with us, comprises two to 20 million genes. On a genetic level, we may be less than 1% human, and make no mistake about it, these bacterial genes play a huge part in our metabolic processes. The gut microbiome refers specifically to the 100 trillion bacteria that make up the inside of our colon. These bacteria create vitamins and actually train our immune system. Not a very vegan act, but if you were to skin a human and lay the skin out flat on the floor, you'd get about 20 square feet. We did the same thing to the lungs, find out all the little alveoli, we'd get about 200 square feet. But if we then took the colon, flattened out all the little diverticuli, some experts estimate that it would probably be about 2,000 square feet, so it is by far our largest interface with the outside world. This is why it is so essential that our immune function is very good here. The more varied the strains of bacteria that we can invite to live in our colon, seemingly the better the health outcome. A rural African eating a plant-based diet may have 15 to 1,600 different strains of bacteria living in his colon, Whereas an omnivorous eater in the West with the, you know, the animal products and the junk food, they may have only 300. The hundreds of different bacteria that we invite to live in the colon and we're finding more all the time can always be categorized into one of two camps. They are either Prevotella or Bacteroides strains. The beneficial Prevotella strains feed on the fiber and resistant starch found in whole plant foods. That's right, all the good guys are whole foods vegans. The Bacteroides strains feed on things like animal protein and fats, refined carbohydrates such as table sugar, and artificial sweeteners. The Prevotella strains break down the fiber and resistant starch by way of fermentation, which creates short chain fatty acids that are essential and produce wonderful health benefits when they interact inside our bodies. One type is called butyrate. Interestingly, the cells of the colon wall are not fed via the bloodstream, and instead use butyrate as energy. With this fuel, they can knit tightly together, which stops pathogens from entering our bloodstream and protects against the development of food allergies and autoimmune diseases by not allowing in proteins that have not been fully digested. Butyrate also has a fantastic epigenetic effect. It actually rewrites the DNA of the cells of our mucosal wall, making them more resilient to cancer. Other short chain fatty acids include acetate, which can actually supply five to 10% of the energy we need to drive our bodies, and also propionate, which has amazing drug-like effects, but without all the downsides. For example, it modulates the expression of an enzyme known as HMG-CoA reductase, which is the rate limiting factor in our production of cholesterol. As well as the cholesterol lowering effect, propionate causes the liver to lower the production of glucose, much in the way of metformin or glucophage does for the treatment of diabetes. And it also lowers blood triglycerides, which is the job of statins and other drugs. Back to the Bacteroides bacteria types. They cannot ferment foods. They break foods down by way of putrefaction or rotting. This can produce no healthful compounds, but it does produce a lot of toxins. Two of these, putrescine and cadaverine, are known to cause depression and anxiety disorders. The breakdown of choline and carnitine from animal products creates trimethylamine in the colon. Trimethylamine is converted to trimethylamine oxide in the liver, which is known to cause diabetes and heart disease, and suspected to cause cancer. The final toxin that I will touch on is known as Cresol. Cresol is mutagenic. 
it irreparably damages the DNA of very important, highly specialized cells known as oligodendrocytes. They are rendered incapable of producing the compound myelin, which is essential in the formulation of insulation around cells in our central nervous systems. This can lead to depression and ultimately, tragically, dementia. Okay, so we know the types of bacteria that we need to flourish in our colon. How do we go about this? Coprolites or fossilized paleo poo show us that paleolithic men ate up to 150 grams of fiber a day. And if we look at the diets of modern tribes people, it tends to echo this. To maximize the different types of healthful strains, it's important to eat a very varied whole foods plant-based diet. We are known as hind gut fermenters. This means that our healthful bacteria live in the large intestine. It's important to eat intact grains and things like legumes versus flour products and things like bean dips, hummus. When we smash things down into small particles, much more of it is absorbed through the small intestine into the bloodstream, leaving less to feed the good bacteria in our colon. Probiotics are probably not as great as most people think. Even the better ones may have only up to eight strains of different bacteria. Although two to five billion sounds like a lot of bacteria, in our colon is 100 trillion. It's a real drop in the ocean. They do have their place if we've had a severe bacterial infection or we've been forced to take antibiotics. That's the time that I would recommend them. However, to make any real difference, preferably we're looking for hundreds of billions, maybe trillions in those little tablets. Fermented whole plant foods, however, are well worth including. A quality sauerkraut in its raw unpasteurized form can contain 680 different strains of beneficial bacteria, so they're well worth including. Drinks like kombucha, you know, much better than the soft drink that they'd be replacing, not so beneficial in terms of bacteria though. A healthy gut microbiome is built in childhood. There's three things to avoid if you have a newborn baby. Number one, C-section births. Obviously they're avoiding the vaginal canal, they're not getting the fluids that contain the mother's bacteria, so that would be a terrible start to life. I was watching a seminar by one expert recently. This sounds a bit unusual, but I totally get it. He planned that his baby would have a, a natural birth, but things went wrong, they had to deliver by C-section. And he actually swabbed his partner's vaginal canal and put the fluids around the baby's lips. And when you really think about it, it sounds odd, but it makes perfect sense. Number two, if babies are not breastfed long enough, that will also damage the gut microbiome. And number three, any child given antibiotics in the first three years of life is gonna have a very damaged gut microbiome. Of course, into childhood and adulthood, antibiotics still devastate our gut microbiome. A study showed that as little as five days of an antibiotic can cause harm for 12 to 24 months. In some cases, our gut microbiome never truly recovers from it. Don't forget too that 80% of the antibiotics produced in the West are given to farmed animals. So if we're eating animal products, we're getting a good dose of antibiotics. Chloride. Back in the day, our drinking water was killing people. So at that time, it was a very good idea to add chloride in to the water system. Nowadays, with the advent of filtered water, bottled water, we can distill water. Why on earth are we dropping something that's there for the express purpose of killing bacteria onto our essential, healthful bacteria? Meal after meal, drink after drink, clean our teeth, we swallow a little bit of water. It is madness. Alcohol. What do surgeons do with their tools when they're operating on us? They dip them in alcohol, again for the express purpose of killing bacteria. If you look at the ingredients list on a can of fizzy drink, a very popular additive is phosphoric acid. It's what gives soft drinks their bite, also kills bacteria. Coffee. I'm sorry to say that the oils in the coffee bean harm our good bacteria too. Herbicides also kill the bacteria, so that is another good reason to go for organic where possible. Dishwashing detergent. Have you ever noticed, no matter how much you try to rinse your crockery, oftentimes there can be a thin film of detergent on there, which again is there for the express purpose of killing bacteria. So a good reason to try and avoid the chemical laden types and look for a more natural alternative. And toothpaste with additives like triphosphate, 
Again, it kills bacteria. I know you probably don't swallow a whole load every time, but you probably swallow a tiny bit. Imagine that twice a day or more for a lifetime, it is gonna do damage. The more we learn about nutrition, the more and more glaringly obvious it is that a whole foods vegan diet is the optimal diet for humans. We all have to die one day, but know that we can have a huge influence on how long we get to live and how happy and functional we get to be during that time. If you felt that this video could be of service to others, why not help grow our wonderful community by sharing it out on your social media and together we'll help everybody to go vegan for victory.